Since the start of the year, Tether has minted over 50 billion USDT, with more than 3 billion being minted in the last month alone. Now, Tether's USDT mints have become a meme among many crypto investors, but few have ever asked the obvious question who the hell is buying all these stablecoins? Today, I'm going to tell you about a report which identified some of USDT's biggest buyers, what they're doing with that USDT, and what effect this could be having on the crypto market. Before we pull out the magnifying glass, I need to cover my ass. I can't give you any financial advice, so please don't ask. Education and entertainment are my only tasks. Now, if this is the first time you hear me rap, my name is Guy and the Coin Bureau is where it's at. This channel is home to quality crypto content that's filled with facts and stats. Coins, tokens, news and reviews are just a few of the things I do. If this sounds good to you, subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell so you know when my next video hits the tube. If time isn't on your side, you can use the timestamps below to skip ahead to any interesting topics you find. Watching until the end, though, is what I advise. That's it for my disclaimer. Let's look at this Tether paper. To understand the importance of today's Tether report, you need to know a few things about Tether and USDT. So, Tether was founded in 2014 by Brock Pierce, Reeve Collins, and Craig Sellers. Tether's current lineup includes JL van der Velde, Giancarlo Devasini, and Paolo Arduino, who also hold executive positions at the Bitfinex cryptocurrency exchange. Tether is based in Hong Kong, but it consists of a series of companies which are registered elsewhere. The location of Tether and its various companies is disputed. As you've probably gathered by now, Tether is the company that issues USDT, cryptocurrency's largest and most popular stablecoin. USDT started trading on Bitfinex in early 2015 and has since found its way onto just about every single cryptocurrency exchange. USDT also exists on about a dozen smart contract cryptocurrency blockchains, including Ethereum, Solana, and Avalanche. Now, every USDT token was initially backed one-to-one -one by US dollars in a bank, specifically the Deltec Bank and Trust based in the Bahamas, which initially custodied all the money backing USDT. However, this changed after the Bitfinex exchange lost access to $850 million in 2018 due to a crackdown on a shadow bank the exchange was using. I'll quickly note that shadow banks are quite common in cryptocurrency because legacy banks are hesitant to offer services to crypto companies. Anyways, to help fill this massive money hole, Tether loaned Bitfinex $550 million of the dollars backing USDT and subsequently changed the wording on its website in early 2019 to read, quote, Every Tether token is always 100% backed by our reserves, which include traditional currency and cash equivalents, and from time to time may include other assets and receivables from loans made by Tether to third parties, which may include affiliated entities. Tether disclosed a detailed breakdown of the assets backing USDT earlier this year. Now, most of these assets are debt of some kind, and these assets are held across various banks in addition to Deltec. In October, Bloomberg published an investigative article which alleged that USDT was partially backed by short-term Chinese corporate debt, possibly even Evergrande debt. Now, this would be a disaster for the crypto market, and if you're wondering why, you can check out my video about Evergrande using the link in the description. Anyhow, Tether responded to the Bloomberg article shortly afterwards and basically said that it was nothing more than a smear piece published for attention. The only problem is that Tether has yet to deliver on its July promise of an audit of the assets backing USDT, and this is why Hindenburg Research subsequently offered a $1 million bounty to anyone who could provide information about Tether's reserves. Tether responded to this bounty too, and likewise said that it was nothing more than a publicity stunt. When it comes to today's Tether report, however, Tether has yet to issue a response, and that makes it that much more interesting. Now, if you want to learn more about Tether's tricky history, you can find a video about that in the description.
Today's Tether Report was put together by journalists at Protos Media. Protos Media was founded in late 2020 by Peter Ruzhgev. As you've probably gathered by now, Protos Media is a crypto news company, and according to its website, it is, quote, not in the pocket of any advertiser or sponsor, unlike other crypto news outlets. If you're wondering who funds Protos Media, the answer seems to be Peter himself. This is because Peter's previous crypto news venture, called CoinPM, was acquired in the summer of 2020. Now, I wasn't able to find who acquired CoinPM, but what I do know is that Protos Media is based here in London, so that's a good sign. Protos Media also has a YouTube channel, and I'll leave a link to it in the description if you're interested. Credit where credit is due, eh, chaps? Now, Protos's Tether report was covered by mainstream crypto media when it was published in early November. It's titled, quote, Tether Papers. This is exactly who acquired 70% of all USDT ever issued. And it builds on an article Protos had published back in August. This August article is titled, quote, Scoop. Tether minted most USDT to just two firms, Alameda and Cumberland. And Protos cited, quote, sources familiar with the matter to back its claims. In contrast to the scoop, the Tether Papers seeks to add credence to those claims by analysing eight of the blockchains that support the USDT stablecoin. The associated Tether Papers FAQ article notes that, quote, over the past five months, we've catalogued and investigated every single USDT sent from Tether to third parties since its inception in 2014. This is interesting because it means Protos's investigation began way back in June. And this made me wonder what inspired Protos to write this piece in the first place. My best guess is that it has something to do with the fact that Tether had temporarily stopped printing USDT in June. As reported by The Block, quote, Tether CTO Paolo Arduino told The Block that the demand for USDT has been impacted due to a significant decrease in open interest for Bitcoin futures. This will be relevant later, so keep it in mind. In terms of why Protos published this piece on Tether, the FAQ notes that, quote, we chose this endeavor to present the crypto ecosystem with the most extensive and transparent research on exactly who buys Tether to date. In terms of why this matters, quote, realizing the scope of the forces that work in crypto markets, specifically those with USDT pairs, equips those who trade cryptocurrencies with knowledge to make more informed decisions. So, with this context in mind, we can finally unpack Protos's Tether Papers. The report begins with a big pie chart, which breaks down the biggest buyers of Tether's USDT stablecoin. Almost 90% of all the USDT ever issued was purchased by market makers. Around 8.5% was purchased by other institutions, and 2.5% was purchased by individuals. This breakdown is based on the assumption that USDT transactions from Tether Treasuries worth more than 100 million went to market makers. USDT transactions worth between 10 and 100 million went to other institutions, and large USDT transactions worth less than 10 million went to individuals. Protos explains in the FAQ article that these groupings are based on the trader taxonomy used by Chainalysis in its August analysis of DeFi adoption. Protos also specifies in the Tether Papers that this analysis only includes the wallet addresses belonging to these entities, not any wallet addresses they have on crypto exchanges, hence why the report can only vouch for 70% of all USDT transfers. In the words of the FAQ, quote, hot wallets of crypto exchanges present black holes in which it's practically impossible to identify intended recipients without access to each platform's internal systems. So, who are USDT's biggest buyers? Well, the first is Alameda Research, one of cryptocurrency's largest market makers. It has received more than a third of all the USDT ever minted by Tether, and most of this USDT was received over the last year. Now, market makers basically make sure that cryptocurrency exchanges always have enough coins and tokens on hand to meet demand. This helps the price of cryptocurrencies on different exchanges stay the same. As it so happens, the founder of Alameda Research is also the founder of the FTX exchange, and that's where almost 90% of Alameda's allocation of USDT has gone. FTX's focus is futures trading. 
Now, the second biggest buyer of USDT is Cumberland Global, a subsidiary of a financial firm called DRW, which specializes in, you guessed it, futures trading. Now, fun fact, the CFTC sued DRW in 2014 on the grounds that it had manipulated the stock market. DRW won the case in 2018. Now, Cumberland Global is DRW's crypto arm, and it has received about 20% of all the USDT ever minted by Tether. 75% of this USDT was received over the last year, and 80% of it went to Binance, which is, of course, the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange. Almost all the rest was sent to unknown wallets, in case you're wondering. The third biggest buyer of USDT is Ifinex, the apparent parent company of both Tether and Bitfinex. Although Ifinex has only received about 4% of the USDT ever sent from Tether's token printers, it received 96% of all USDT minted between 2016 and 2020. Not surprisingly, 99% of this USDT went to Bitfinex. The fourth biggest buyer of USDT is Nexo, the popular centralized crypto lending and borrowing platform. Nexo has received about 2% of all the USDT minted by Tether, and it basically sent half of this USDT to its platform and the other half to Binance. The fifth biggest buyer of USDT is Hecker, a market maker from Malta that's made up of multiple mighty minds from the University of Malta. Say that 10x fast. Hecker has received about 1% of all the USDT minted by Tether, and about 70% of this USDT went to Bitfinex, presumably on behalf of the people who buy into Hecker's private crypto fund. The sixth biggest buyer of USDT is Jump Crypto, a subsidiary of Jump Trading, another fairly famous financial firm. While Jump Crypto received less than 1% of all the USDT issued by Tether, it received 99% of all the USDT issued by Tether on the Solana blockchain. This is because Jump Crypto provides liquidity for Project Serum, FTX's DeFi ecosystem that it's building on Solana. Now, if you're curious about Solana's potential, you can check out my most recent video about the project. That's in the description. This brings me to the other institutions that have been buying USDT. Because their allocations are quite small, I'll just list them out in the same order that Protos did. First up is Three Arrows Capital, a crypto hedge fund which was founded way back in 2012. It's received nearly $700 million of USDT from Tether over the years. Most of this digital dry powder has been invested into Bitcoin and DeFi tokens such as Uniswap, SushiSwap, Compound, and Aave. Three Arrows seems to have made a nice profit on these cryptocurrencies because Protos later notes that Three Arrows sent back nearly $2 billion of USDT to Tether, presumably to redeem for fiat. The second institution that's been buying a lot of USDT from Tether is Delchain, a subsidiary of Tether's aforementioned bank, Deltech. Delchain has received over 900 million USDT from Tether over the years, and most of it went to Bitfinex. The third institution that's been buying a lot of USDT from Tether is Blockchain Access, the company behind Blockchain.com. Blockchain Access has received nearly 900 million USDT from Tether over the years, and it all went to various cryptocurrency exchanges. Protos did not provide percentages in this case. The fourth institution that bought up a lot of USDT from Tether was Ren Renbit, a Chinese cryptocurrency exchange. Now, I use the past tense because Ren Renbit bit the dust after China's most recent crypto crackdown. Before the lights went out, though, it managed to handle $200 million in USDT. No info about where that went, but probably back to Tether. This leaves one last category, and that's the largest individual buyers of USDT. So, in first place, we have Shilong Wang, an unknown individual who provides cryptocurrency services to a handful of shady trading firms which apparently don't exist. Protos refers to Shilong and his or her affiliates as Shilong's web, and the spider behind the operation received almost 600 million USDT from Tether in its early days. Protos points out that Shilong's web has a history of sending significant amounts of USDT to Cumberland Global, the market maker I mentioned earlier. In second place, we have Justin Sun, the founder of Tron. Justin has received no less than 200 million USDT, and most of it was purchased between 2019 and 2020. Justin has also sent 120 million USDT to Tether's treasury, suggesting he made some nice profits. In third place, we have Christopher Harborn, 
a British businessman who was a major donor to the Brexit party. Christopher received 70 million USDT from Tether in 2019, and this might have something to do with the fact that he was a shareholder in another company that's connected to Ifinex, Bitfinex, and Tether. Now get this, he owned these shares under his Thai identity, Chakrit Sakunkrit, and all of this information was revealed in the Panama Papers. If that wasn't crazy enough, Christopher Harborn is the father of William Harborn, the founder and CEO of Bitfinex's DEX, Diversify. Now this all sounds like the start of a crypto mystery, and you can learn all about those by checking out my video about them, in the description, of course. The last section of Protos's Tether Papers tackles all the USDT that's been sent back to Tether's treasuries. Protos starts by explaining that 80% of the USDT ever sent back to Tether came from cryptocurrency exchanges. This means it's impossible to track for the same reason that 30% of Tether's outgoing USDT transactions are. Even so, Protos knows that roughly 37 billion USDT went back to Tether's treasuries, and based on the criteria of the three categories, 62% came from market makers, 34% came from other institutions, and 4% came from individuals. Besides Three Arrows Capital, Protos was able to identify Nexo as another entity that cashed out, and that was to the tune of 1.75 billion USDT. Now, Protos concludes by giving its thoughts about what the findings in the Tether Papers mean for the crypto market. This section can basically be summarized in two sentences. The first, quote, Crypto traders on most exchanges should understand the sheer size of who they could be trading against. And the second, quote, What is proven is that Alameda Research and Cumberland Global are two prolific Tether buyers that trust USDT is valued correctly. There was a third sentence in the conclusion that caught my eye, and that's, quote, Three Arrows was able to acquire USDT in the lead-up to a giant crypto bull run and then return those funds as the market was cooling off. This begs the question of what effect the activities of all these USDT buyers is having on the crypto market. Starting with the market makers, it's unlikely that their USDT activities are affecting the prices of any cryptocurrencies. However, the fact that many market makers invest the gains they make from their operations into up-and-coming crypto projects is probably having an effect on their respective coins and tokens. Take Alameda Research, for example. It has invested millions of dollars into various cryptocurrencies, especially in Solana's ecosystem. Alameda and its mates dropped over 300 million on Sol in June alone. Depending on how that post-ICO coin sale was set up, this could have had a positive or negative effect on the price of Sol. Put simply, the degree to which USDT-hungry market makers affect the crypto market depends on what they're doing with the profits from their activities. This means you should keep a close eye on the projects that Alameda Research and Cumberland Global are investing in. Not financial advice, of course. As for other institutions that are actively buying USDT, it sounds like their effects on the crypto market are much more pronounced. The thing is that Protos doesn't specify exactly what it means by, quote, giant crypto bull run. If this is in reference to a Bitcoin bull run specifically, then that's certainly quite concerning. If this is in reference to bull runs among altcoins, though, then it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. It's well known that there's a lot of VC money sloshing around in DeFi, and DeFi is apparently what Three Arrows Capital is all about. There are lots of large individual investors in DeFi too, and I have no doubts that some of them are impacting the prices of select cryptocurrencies to their benefit. Not saying Three Arrows is doing this, mind you. If you're wondering if Tether's USDT prints pump the crypto market, I'll start by saying that Protos explained in the Tether Papers FAQ that while there is a correlation between USDT mints and positive price action, it's possible that this is simply a byproduct of the demand for USDT that comes along when the crypto market is rallying. If you watch my video about whether stablecoins manipulate the crypto market, you'll know that this has been my hypothesis for quite some time. I still stand by it. If anything, Protos's Tether Papers have underscored just how much of an impact futures trading has on the crypto market. Case in point, Tether recently stopped printing USDT, and during that period, Coindesk published an opinion piece which explained how demand for leverage has dropped substantially over the last couple of weeks. Bitcoin's price has consequently been sluggish. Now, if you want a deeper dive into just how much of an effect futures trading can have on the crypto market, you can check out my video about that in the description.
Okay, that's it for today's video, folks. If you enjoyed it, smash that like button. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and ping that notification bell for good measure. If you're feeling under the weather, I've got some amazing content on the Coin Bureau Clips channel that will make you feel better. You can also follow me on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram for hot takes and behind the scenes outtakes. I know it's hard to keep up with the crypto market, which is why my Telegram channel is packed with daily crypto updates. The tools, tips, and tricks you find in my weekly newsletter will help you minimize your mistakes and give you everything you need to turn your portfolio from bad to great. If you're shopping around for holiday gifts, check out the Coin Bureau merch store before it's too late. I've got lots of different Christmas-themed crypto teas ready to go, and you can find them and the links to all the other resources I mentioned using the description down below. Thank you so much for watching until the end. Until next time, my friends, keep calm and hodl on. Thank <laughs> you.